Hello, Flickering Myth family, and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ, and I am so excited for today's video. We're going to be discussing a brand new show coming to Sky Atlantic in the next week and to stars in the next month. If you're into juicy royal drama, if you love a little bit of LGBT storytelling, if you love Julianne Moore and Nicholas Gatlazane, boy, I have a show for you. Let's dive into Mary and George. To be quite honest with you, in the historical drama sphere, this is not a time period I'm too familiar with. Kings, queens, royals, France, England, Scotland, all of this is kind of lost on me. But I walked into the show and I said, you know what I want? A woman trying to get her twink son to fight another twink for the king's love. Boy. I, I, that's exactly what I wanted and that's exactly what this show delivered on. So yeah, I'm saying you don't need to come in the show with a bunch of knowledge about historical stuff. Uh, I'm also going to give you a heads up. If that's the kind of review you're looking for, for the fact and fiction of this, this is not that kind of review. I came in here for the juicy drama and that delivered because my goodness, for the three episodes I have seen, I had a blast. One thing I'm also not too familiar with is UK television. The tone, the tone. I've seen a few UK movies and shows here and there. It's not like a complete like a uh, blind spot for me, but it's the tone that always gets me. When it's a comedy, it's a dark comedy. The darkest, bleakest, driest comedy. If it's a drama, it has such weird humor sprinkled throughout. This show is exactly that. It's in between this weird kind of shocking show but it's also funny and you know a lot of campy a lot of barbs a lot of shade being thrown if you want to hear a bunch of people dressed up nicely talking shit to each other that's what mary and george offers but there's a lot more here there's a lot more looks at women in this time period and what you have to do to survive same thing with men who maybe aren't fit for royalty who are fighters who aren't you know who are more lovers than fighters where do they go and this show kind of explores all these different themes but to be quite Quite frank with you, I really want to watch Nicholas Gatlazine and Julianne Moore be bitchy and try to sleep with a king. Like, I, I, I truly wanted one thing from this show, it delivered on that, and it gave me even more. Like I said, I've only seen the first three episodes, and I'm not going to get into spoilers, but I do want to talk about some of the things, like what happens in these first three episodes. So the first one, and the real basic setup, is we're watching Mary and George try to figure out their life situation. She sends him off to be a bit more proper, to get him prepared for the life that she's about to give him. She's also dealing with her own stuff. We're seeing Mary's situation. We're seeing how hard it is for her. I mean, women in this time period especially, you know, having to marry, you know, who do you marry? Who gives gives you the most power, all that kind of stuff. So episode one is really setting up the story. Episode two is trying to get George in front of the king. Mary is plotting, scheming, lying, cheating, stealing. It's so good to watch. I mean, Julianne Moore, we'll talk about actors in a moment, but watching Julianne Moore just struggle, not struggle even, really try to get things together for her son and the, 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 the leaps and the bounds that she will go through to get this it's insane. It's almost shocking. This show really pulls off some crazy things, especially in episode two. Then by episode three, we have George where he needs to be, but how does he stay there? Especially when there's maleficent forces around trying to do magic, witchcraft, wizardry. Like uh, this show truly gets into some things that I'm like, oh, I did not expect that. Again, it's not a supernatural show, but this is a time period where there was a lot of like apothecary. There was a lot of weird science that was maybe science or was it witchcraft? You know, it, it's a, again, this time period is so strange for history. The the queerness of this time period as well. The fact that King, like, uh, was it King James is allowed to openly kiss, you know, Somerset, you know, and be with the boys, like, it's kind of shocking that they are allowing this and are they even allowing it? Who's scheming? Like, is the queen really happy about all this? Are the people under thing? Like, what's Somerset's goal? It's, it's a lot of lying, like cheating and stealing. It's truly like Game of Thrones, but you replace the dragons with a little bit more gay sex. And goodness, that is what this has to offer. And if you're interested in, like I said, shady people throwing shade, there's a couple of 
pretty decent, you know, love scenes that I were shocked that were as, uh, well, I won't say as graphic, but as forward as they were. And if you want some vague historical knowledge, this show is exactly for you. Now, there is a lot of characters in this show, especially ones that I'm not even going to mention in this section. People who are attached to other people. You know, Mary has a female friend who she's very close with. There's a lot of fun, shady people there. You know, it, what is it? George even has a brother who, poor George's brother, what's his name? J John? Poor John. John goes through it in these first couple episodes. But yeah, we focus on four main characters. We have Mary Valeris, played by Julianne Moore, doing the Lord's work. I mean, first off, her English accent, amazing. She is such such a good character. I interviewed Julianne Moore, which you guys can see up here, where I talked about her playing bad people and how she brings the, the badness out of them while still being so good at it. And I just love that she doesn't look at these people as bad. You should check out that interview. It's so good. And she brings that to this like show. She does such great work making you hate Mary, but also understand her, but also be scared of her, but also, again, empathize with her. Mary is a complicated character that I don't think everyone is going to like. People are going to be very pissed with the decisions and the snarky, evil stuff that she has to do to get her son to the position that she wants for her to survive and for her son to survive, for her kids to survive, for her family's name to survive. This woman is doing the most that she can, and I'm I, I'm on I'm on Mary's side. I'm on Mary's side. I don't think she's the evilest person in the world, as we're seeing, especially in episode three. There is even darker, eviler people in this universe. So how do you handle them? That's kind of the conversations here. So we have Mary, and then we have George, Nicholas Gatlazine. I know him from Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I absolutely loved last year. You can also see him in Bottoms. He's kind of blowing up as an actor right now. And deservedly so, he does this thing. It, he did it in Red, White, and Royal Blue, where he looks so dumb, sad boy, but he's using that to his advantage. Like, you think he's just dumb twink boy, but there's things working on, but he's also using that, oh, look how sad and confused he looks, to his advantage. Like, this guy is playing these characters so well. There's layers to him. You just think he's going to be, you know, sunken in eyes, sad boy, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And he's even plotting and stealing and doing what he, you know, he's definitely under his mom's uh, you know, guidance, but I really love what he's trying to do here and how he has to play his own games and how he finds his way there. You know, he, he's a little cringe. He's not really great at being sexy. Zero risk. This boy does not know how to spice up a man, but once he gets there, he actually shows that that little vulnerability, that non riz is what that is. The, is the, uh, the attractiveness to him. So then we also have Tony Curran, who is playing King James the first, Oh my goodness, there's not enough of him, to be honest. Like, I love this guy. I love this acting. I, I think he's great, and I think I just want more. Every episode, I'm like, oh, where's the king at? Like, he he's in the show. I, I definitely don't want you to think that like, you're not getting the king when you're watching this. But it's like, he's so good, and I want to see more. So I hopefully, through episode four, through the rest of the series, we're focusing on this more. You know, we're really getting George in a position by the end of episode three, where he's going to definitely be with the king a lot more. But I was hungry for him, which is a great performance. When he's there, he's there a good amount, but you're even wanting more than that. The person that we see a lot of, though, Lori Davidson, he uh, played Mr. Mustafeles in the Cats movie. My weird reference point for this actor. But what I really loved is his Somerset. Robert Somerset is, oh, he looks like Shakespeare. He looks like a problem. He looks like I understand why the king is in the position the king is in with this boy, with this man. The, you know, he's evil, but he's so soft. Oh my goodness. There is Somerset's a character I did not expect to like as much because he's kind of like the adversary for George who we're following. You want to put yourselves in that main character position. So Somerset should just be evil and you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with him. He's in our way. But goodness, I love spending time with him. I love watching him and George's interactions as well. It's like, again, two twinks fighting over an old man baby, you sold me. And these actors are playing it so well. It's believable. You believe these characters are really fighting for this. The time period, everyone just fits in so well. It's great acting. Again, I love the supporting cast, but these four are really doing such amazing work on this show. That is it for my review of the first three episodes of Mary and George. This is kind of an overview of the series. I haven't finished it. I will be definitely watching it weekly. This is like delicious drama that I am so excited for. I don't really watch TV too often, but there's always one or two shows like this that really suck me in. 
this one sucked me in, no pun intended, to all the sucking and loving and kissing that's happening in this show. My goodness. What did you think of my review? Are you excited to watch Mary and George? Who who are you looking forward to most? Are you like a Nicholas Gatlazine fan? Are you a Julianne Moore stan? Who are you looking forward to? What's your most excited episode? What, what are you looking forward to when you're watching Mary and George? Share your thoughts down in the comments below. Give me all of the thumbs up, all of the comments, all of the subscriptions. If you are subscribed to Flickering Myth already, thank you so much. Make sure you guys are commenting because I want to know if you're here watching our stuff. Thank you so much for joining me and make sure you share your Mary and George thoughts right down below.